very strong half. We've lost $7 billion. We've seen the rollout of the vaccine, and I think that changes everything. If February's reporting season is anything to go by, Australia's economy is well and truly in recovery mode. Half-year results have given us an insight into where that recovery is strongest and who's getting the most cash from the turnaround. We've got something like 86% of um, ASX 200 companies that have reported a profit. Now, the normal, the long-term average is 88%. I think that earnings growth is um, back on the agenda over the next two to three years. The bank's surprised with the news 91% of borrowers have resumed mortgage repayments after deferring them earlier. We've seen a very strong recovery across Australia, which I think is a credit to the overall uh, management of the pandemic. With the price of iron ore soaring, it was no surprise our miners did well too, and they passed on their takings. BHP got the party started, dishing out a record payment. Rio Tinto, which handed down its full year results, announced a second half dividend and a special dividend. And Fortescue Metals Group almost doubled its payment to shareholders. If you can sell more of the product, if you, you, the price is getting up towards some of the highest levels that we've ever seen, clearly you're in a great position to be able to provide uh, some uh, money to shareholders. With record low wages growth, JobKeeper's final days ticking down and job seeker payments much lower than advocates say are necessary, the billions of dollars in dividends is a huge injection of stimulus to the economy. Some retailers also did well, a signal many of us are feeling confident enough to open our wallets. Net profit after tax was higher for JB Hi-Fi, Super Retail Group, which owns BCF, Rebel and Super Cheap Auto, and West Farmers, thanks to sales at its Bunnings and Officeworks stores. But the sector was a mixed bag. We saw that definitely coming through in Coles, which came out with a strong result. But then the outlook was very soft and we saw the shares being sold off. A number of companies handed back millions of dollars in government stimulus payments. The bounce back has been a lot stronger than initially anticipated. So not surprising that a lot of companies are choosing to uh, hand back government stimulus. And there's been a string of them announcing they're sending money back to Canberra, including Cochlear, Toyota, Aluka Resources, home and lifestyle retailers, food businesses and healthcare providers. While the handing back of taxpayers' money shows some businesses have done better than expected, some are questioning whether others have used the JobKeeper payment to boost their own coffers and dish out cash to shareholders. Harvey Norman more than doubled its net profit after tax and is paying shareholders hundreds of millions in dividends, but won't return the millions of dollars in JobKeeper it was given by the government. If they really believe their own corporate social responsibility statements, then highly profitable JobKeeper recipients will give the money back. Qantas, Flight Centre, Webjet, they're all big losers this reporting season in terms of the result. Qantas posted a $1.1 billion loss and pushed back its anticipated return to international travel. Flight Centre recorded a $234 million loss and Webjet's loss for the half was $132 million. Not surprisingly, none of the travel companies are paying dividends. It's unlikely the full year results in six months' time will see the same robust turnabout because there won't be the same level of loss to bounce back from. And as long as border closures restrict population growth, the economic recovery will hit a ceiling. But the key takeaway from this season's numbers, Australia continues to recover much better than anyone expected.